B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. This is B2B Cambodia's Ratana. Thanks for watching. Today, we have Mr. Andrew Ban, the founder and director of the Presentation Clinics, one of the few social training company in Cambodia, we started in 2016. Andrew has over 25 years of experience in voice coaching, public relations, and broadcast media. Thank you, Mr. Andrew, for speaking with us today. You started the presentation clinic in 2016, and it has been nearly 10 years now. So my first question is, what motivated you to start the presentation clinic in Cambodia? Gosh, when you say it's been almost 10 years, it does feel like a long time. Um, yeah, 2016 was the decision to move to Cambodia to open the presentation clinic, but I'd been in Cambodia before. I was here in 2012 for about a month, just me and my backpack. And by the time I left for home, I realized there was a need in the market for the type of training that I could provide, just in terms of confidence building, public speaking, presentations, all the stuff that I do now as, as part of my mainstream business. Um, so that was the decision really, was that I wanted to be in Southeast Asia. I was living in Cape Town in South Africa at the time, but I wanted to be somewhere closer to all the places that are on my bucket list that I want to see, and Southeast Asia just made sense in terms of a base. So I was very pleased to start Googling and have a look at visa requirements and requirements or ownership of a foreign business and could see that Cambodia was going to be an easy option to come and set up the business that I wanted to set up. In terms of soft skill trainings market in Cambodia, how can you say it? Is it growing now? It's growing exponentially. I mean, when I first arrived, the marketplace for training and development was quite was still quite busy, but it was easier to stand out. It's also really encouraging, though, to see uh, uh, many younger Khmer's opening their own training consultancies, because it's the one thing I keep coming up against. Obviously, being an Englishman, I don't speak Khmer fluently, and some companies do want training in Khmer. So I'm glad that that gap in the market is, is, you know, is being met by young Cambodians who have gone overseas perhaps to study, gain some international experience and have come back to the country to give something back. In terms of soft skill training, like uh, what are the key areas of skill that are now in my demand? Well, it tends to be aligned with market sectors that are doing particularly well. So for example, I mean, tourism in Cambodia has long been a major string in the economic bow and all the soft skills associated with excellence in service and tourism and hospitality um, are a major part of my business. I do most of my work with multinational hotels and there the need really is for the associate level, that sort of entry level to team leader supervisor, mm -hmm. it's confidence building, it's that sense of empowerment. It's knowing that if there's a problem, I need to feel confident enough and empowered enough to take action there and then to keep the guest happy and then later go and find my supervisor and say, I hope it's okay, but I did this. And what a lot of young staff are doing is they will rather not have the confidence to make a decision in the moment. Will then almost waste time in going to find their team leader and supervisor and asking, is it okay if I do this? And in that gap of time, the guest has just got more annoyed. They feel the attitude is bad. The service is not good. So it's really core soft skills. Realizing your job is yours. This is my area of responsibility. And it's up to me to make things happen. What do you think are the benefit for those company to train this staff soft skill? And whether you're working with the presentation clinic or you're working with many of the other reputable training organizations in Phnom Penh, we're all in the business because we believe in making a difference. And we're in the business because we believe in transformative training. It must make a difference. It should count. And with some training, you'll see an impact straight away. Now, I've done public speaking workshops, for example, or presentation skills training with a sales team. And I get a phone call from my client the next week to say, gosh, what have you done with these guys? They're so much better. That's easier to, to monitor, but for things like sales training, building more effective client relations, uh, creating a better first impression, getting customers past pain points, where you start to see a difference in your bottom line in terms of the percentage of sales increase, that needs to be tracked over a longer period of time. And then I'll stay in touch with clients sometimes for three or six months to find out, are you seeing a difference? And usually always the answer is yes. For a local company, like, or maybe international company, when they look for skilled training company, they may look over Cambodian-based company. What do you think about that? I don't understand why a company would want to pay two or three times more for training that can be provided 
perfectly adequately by a trainer who's based locally. I mean, I've been here you know, going over eight years, so I've got a fair deal of, of local knowledge. I'm not the only one. And again, just to mention again, those Kamai training companies, and those Kamai trainers that are, are coming through the ranks in these past couple of years, they also deserve business and they know what they're talking about. So I do wish more companies would rather look locally before they decide to get a high, you know, a high flying consultant from, from somewhere else in the region. What do you advise for companies or multinational company in Cambodia when they think about soft skills training program? I think you ignore soft skills training at your peril. Um, it may be frustrating sometimes that you don't find the skill set that you are immediately looking for in, Cam in your Cambodian staff. But we have to understand that staff here are a, a product of their environment and their culture and their education and there is a skills gap and it's important that we all work hard at, at closing that skills gap. Sometimes soft skills training can be viewed as an expensive, I wanted to say a waste of time, but you know, an expensive necessity, it's something that you need to do. But there is a huge return on investment. And as I said, Cambodians love to learn. They respond really quickly when the training is pitched at a level that they understand, they see the benefits of why they need to change or why they need to be better at this particular thing. And I think when the training is done right and the staff really respond really well, that can only be a benefit to the company that's paying for the training. It was great to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching B2B Cambodia. Join us next time for more exclusive interview. Thank you.